Yeah. All right. It is seven o'clock, so we're gonna start our meeting. You gotta pull into the ramp. Sarah. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Um, all right, we're going to start the meeting. Um, I'm going to call the meeting to order. This is the regular city council meeting for September 18th for Minatrista. Um, first off, I'd like to um, suggest that everybody turn their cell phones on silent or airplane mode so they don't disrupt the meeting. And second, I'd like you to join me in Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So welcome, everyone. Thank you for being here this evening and joining us, and also those of you on YouTube later on. I'm going to start out first with some introductions. I'm Lisa Whalen. I'm the mayor. To my left are council members Kathleen Refkin, Ann McGregor, Claudia Lacey, and then Peter Vickery is absent this evening. And then on the end, we have our city engineer, Allison Fowski, with WSB. And then we have our director of public works, Gary Peters. And then um, in the back, we have sitting in as our city clerk, Ange Angie Bull. And then we have um, on my right, uh, Jasper Krugel, who is our city administrator, Brian Grimm who is our finance director, David Abel, who is our community development director, and then Sarah Sansala, who is our city attorney with Kennedy and Graven. And then on the very end, last but certainly not least, Chief Falls with our public safety department. So again, welcome everybody. Um, first order of business will be to approve the agenda. Are there any other items that we need to add? Anything we need to change? If not, hearing none, those um, then is there a motion to approve the agenda as presented? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Lacey. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. McGregor. All those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes. So this evening we have some um, esteemed gentlemen with us this evening from the, Lion, the West Tonka Lions. Um, we have Mark Do Doppner Hovey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to let you gentlemen introduce yourselves, but I do want to say welcome and thank you for coming. It's always good to have that, um, know what you folks do in our community and for our community. Yeah, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Oh, great. Awesome. Thanks so much. Yeah, my name is Joe Morimoto. I'm the president of the West Tonka, the Northwest Tonka Lions Club. Uh, Mark Debnomi is our esteemed secretary, former president. And then we have Mr. Jeff Lau. He's also a former president and now retired from that job. Lucky him. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to point out none of them came and spoke here, but uh, it's fine. <laughs> uh, no, we're really, really grateful. Mayor Whalen, thank you so much for the invitation to come and speak. Uh, we know that these, these meetings are a lot of valuable time, so I will keep it brief and hopefully uh, have some levity to bring to this uh, not so fun meeting, right? <laughs> So, we uh, have fun. We have fun. <laughs> oh, good, good, good. <laughs> All right, so we were started in 1953. Our club started in 1953. Right now we have 50 people. So we have 36 members, 14 staff. So wow. we are employers in the community. So we run a lot of the uh, pull tab tickets. If you guys uh, are part of the uh, pull tab IRA, <laughs> you know, we, uh, yep. we're, we're fond investors <laughs> of that. Um, so we serve the community doing that. We serve Mound, Minnetrista, Spring Park, St. Bonnie, uh, Long Lake, Orono, Independence, and Maple Plain. And we, uh, we take a lot of pride in that. Uh, like I said, I'm Joe Mormon, I'm the president. Uh, Eric Deadwiler is our vice president. Many of you probably have had the pleasure of meeting him. He is more of the outspoken one of the two of us. Uh, Kalen Sane is our treasurer. Mark Devnovi back there is our secretary, and Lori Bart is our gambling manager. So she makes sure that we run a tight ship and she does a great job at it. This is some of the community engagement that we've had. Uh, we've done Spirit of the Lakes, Gillespie Center, Rock in the Block, Music in the Park, Weekend Fundraisers, Mountain Fire Centennial Golf Event, which we are uh, gonna be doing this Friday that we're really excited about. Uh, we also did Courts for a Cause, the Eli Hart fundraiser, uh, where our Vice President Eric uh, spoke at. So really, really proud of all this engagement that we've had. There we go. 
this is that Centennial Golf event that I was just talking about for the Mountain Fire Department. Uh, all proceeds that we raise go to this fire department. Um, and it's $13,000 raised to date with a goal of $25,000. So shameless plug if anybody wants to get a <laughs> team in there, feel free. From our charitable gambling, we've grossed $7 million in the fiscal year 2023. Wow. So we're a pretty big organization. And we've done a pretty daggone good job at it, if I do say so myself. 240000 in net profit. Wow. And then you'll see right down there the five-star rating. This is something that we go through rigorous tests. They look at all of our receipts, how much we've given to. A big portion of why we get the five-star rating is how much we give back. 90% of everything that we give back, that we make, that we give, is to this community directly. With very, very few exceptions, uh, that we'll talk about here. And this is the breakdown. So fiscal year 2023 donations. The Northwest Sonic Lions Club has donated over $220,000 to date and more in the pipeline to come. Local community, 148,000. You can see there it says supporting the Eli Howard Memorial Playground, Gillespie Center Wheat Can, West Tonka Food Shelf, WRA Park, Mount Fire Department, and the Langdon among others. So we continuously look aggressively for places to donate and to give to, to help build that esprit de corps inside of our, inside of our community. School and youth, $56,500, West Tonka Public Schools, MWH Sports, Walnut Field. Veterans, this is where it dips outside of the direct local, although we do have a lot of veterans. Uh, and thank you to all my brothers in arms and sisters in arms who have served. Uh, Helping Paws and Silent Warriors Project, $13,600. And then we donate back to Lions International, $5,000. They do hearing, sight, and diabetes. Wow. So we, uh, we try to make an impact every single way we can, without, without exception. Unlike promised, that was brief, it was. right? Thank you. <laughs> I want to thank you guys for your time. And if there's any questions or feedback, I'd love to answer any that you have. I just want to say um, we are excited, too, to have you participate um, f and for your fundraiser, but have you participate in our very first ever um, holiday event coming up. We're so excited that you're willing to do that for us. Um, it'll be a great partnership and looking forward to that fun event together. So thank you very much for doing that. Yeah. But, Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks. yeah, thanks for letting us be part of it. Yeah. If there's anything we can do to help mitigate the paperwork, we'd be more than happy okay. to help you out. <laughs> Talk to that guy right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, no, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Any, anything else? Any other questions? Uh, I didn't know that you worked with diabetes, and I thought it was just eyes. Yeah. Yeah, so we work with eyes, hearing, diabetes. Your hearing and diabetes are new to me. I yeah. I was just eyes. Yep, yep. We look, like I said, we look for every, every avenue of approach that we can to give back, uh, mostly to this community, yes. but the Lions International as a whole, which we are a part of that organization, we, uh, we look for every, every opportunity to give back. Thank uh, you okay. for what you give to this community from the bottom of my heart. Yeah. Thank you. Well, yeah. thank you guys for your time. Thanks for your support. And uh, I'll give this back to you. All right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. So that concludes our special um, presentations, but we have um, two ladies that are signed up to speak under persons to be heard. Um, do you, Sherry, do you want to start? Or? Okay. All right. Sherry Wallace. Hi, um, my name is Sherry Wallace. I am the chair of the Harrison's Bay Association. Um, I have a handout here I just want to give to you. We're here to really just introduce ourselves to you. Um, I think we were here for a, um, a presentation earlier. Um, we are, our, our mission as an association is, uh, we were developed in 2021. Um, we are a nonprofit 501c3, is it c3? I yep. always get them, I always do backwards. <laughs> um, c3, um, we were developed because um, Harrison's Bay is an impaired bay. 
as is Dunning's, which mm -hmm. is in Mayor Trista also, and um, West Arm, and Halsteads. And we really wanted to bring attention to the issues associated with that impairment. Um, our initiatives are um, community first, um, and that includes <coughs> education around water quality issues. Um, we also are involved in um, invasive um, species control, specifically the vegetation. We have a real problem with invasive uh, curly leaf. Um, and we are working on water quality issues. And that's really why we're here today, is we want to uh, present an opportunity to you. Um, our water quality issues are actually um, focused on how to educate our community. I am a certified Minnesota water steward, as is Angie Savstrom, and we have learned a lot. It's been eye-opening. So the ability for us to actually um, transfer that knowledge, not only through Harrison Spade's website, but also through community events. So we are focused on rain barrels as a way for us to capture um, rainwater and keep it from going into the polluted water from running off. So, um, sorry, um, rain, the stormwater runoff is the number one cause of urban pollution in our lakes. Mm -hmm. And by controlling and um, soaking it up is what we're calling it. That's the name of our initiative, soaking it up we can keep that polluted water out of the lakes and those nutrients that go along with it. Mm -hmm. So, and the other thing, which I think we presented back in January was our, um, our CARP initiative, mm -hmm. which um, Halstead's is probably the number one for the number of CARP that are in the bay of all the bays. Uh, West Arm is, is very similar. Harrison's and Jennings all have, we did a population assessment, huge population of mm -hmm. carp, and nobody is recognizing it or making a plan to manage it. And so we're working with LMCD, with the watershed, how can we bring attention to that? So what we're here today, and Angela is going to present, is um, to talk about rain barrels and what we did in Mound last year. Thanks, Sherry. Um, to state your name, I'm sorry, and I forgot to say you have to state your name and address, but I'll just read your address if that's okay. Yeah. So um, Sherry Wallace's address, 2135 Overland Lane in Mound, Minnesota. And so, Hi, and I'm Angela Salstrom, and I live, I'm at 25 Sherwood Drive in Mound. Um, sorry, I hope I can, can still come to the Minnesota meeting, but as Sherry said, so this is a group of just, you know, just concerned local citizens who are coming out to make um, the community and, and in particular our water quality better and there are a lot of different initiatives going on um, but one that we had actually a lot of success with and a lot of fun with this last year was rain barrels um, so the idea or the reason that I love this I'm a new water steward and I don't have a, a really super deep background in science or whatever but as I learned more and learned that some of the ways that we um, can protect water are really complicated and some are really simple I was really inspired by the rain barrel program and that it's something that everybody can do easily right so the idea is all of our roof have all of our roofs cause runoff water that would if we didn't have a house there soak in um, and be purified naturally it runs off it goes off really quickly perhaps onto your driveway in the street and then ends up collects sediment on its way and, and pollutants um, and ends up polluting our waterways right so one really easy way to combat this is you can get this $90 water barrel, or sorry, rain barrel, um, hook it up to your gutters, and then use that water, spread it around, put it in your gardens, and, um, and stop that from becoming stormwater. So this past year, we started with just a pilot. Um, the Restart Community Association of Minnesota has a program throughout Minnesota where they help people, and it's mostly municipalities, right? So it's mostly counties or cities, um, distribute rain barrels um, and we are the first group that wasn't a city or a, count or a county who took this on ordered by the truckload so a minimum of 72 rain barrels 
um, and had to commit to them before Christmas um, and then sold them. Well, they sold in just a few weeks and we had tremendous success with it. So we're really happy. And just those 72 rain barrels stop over 100,000 gallons of storm water from running off and really polluting Lake Minnetonka every year. Um, in addition to distributing them, we actually turned it into just a fun water quality event. The University of Minnesota came out with a turf truck. Um, <coughs> we, we distributed over 200 native plants so people could put like a mini rain garden in their own home. Um, we educated visitors, we had donuts and coffee and, and it just was a really nice time right alongside the farmer's market. Um, very successful and just a fun community event while doing a ton of water quality education and distributing these rain barrels. So it was great. This next year, our hope is that we can expand it. The groundwork's laid. We've got people in, in place to manage the project. So we'd love to have Minna Trista and Mound work together on it if there's interest. Um, the idea would be then to double the quantity. So we'd order 144, um, distribute them or sell them throughout both cities and then have one collaborative event where we have some fun, do some water education, um, explain to people how to use them. So like when people came through, we had a whole demo of how you can hook it up to your gutter, et cetera, um, and, and have a whole you know, big community of people with rain barrels protecting our water. Um, in addition to Harrison's Bay Association, the city of Mount was really a strong supporter. So they donated the space, they helped us unload and store them, and they contributed to every resident of Mount who purchased them. So last year's pricing was a $90. Uh, Mount kicked in $20, and then our city engineer, Bolton and May, um, kicked in another $10. So when people got to the bottom line, they were really $60 for a rain barrel, which is super cheap. Um, so the idea is, and then Bolton and May came and had a had a like a kids interactive activity too, where they learned about stormwater and everything that they're doing to engineer a cleaner city. So we would just love anyone who wants to participate um, to be part of this next year. We need to know we don't have the exact date, but last year it was December twenty third. So we would need to commit um, with the city about if you're interested in supporting this and if you're interested in contributing um, before, you know, mid-December. So what we would have to do, Angela, is we're obviously we're not going to make any decision tonight. Um, and I do know we can't contribute to your organization. We can't mm -hmm. donate to your organization because obviously we, we had this... We had this discussion before we wanted to contribute to uh, the Lions for their fire yeah. relief yeah. thing. Um, so as a city, we're not allowed to contribute to 501c3s. Um, but maybe purchasing rain barrels is a different issue. So what we'll have to do is we'll put this on a future um, uh, work session, and then we'll figure out. Uh, so what we would need to know from you, if you could then provide staff with ex with your ask, what, what exactly are you asking? Yeah. Give us some information on dates, and then in the meantime, we would also be checking with our attorney to make sure that we can legally participate in whatever fashion that may be. Yes, yes. So. And actually, the city does contribute along with the resident who purchased it to the Recycling Association of Minnesota. So it doesn't go through us. Okay, and so we, we would just have to, like I said, make sure that we're legal. <laughs> yes. We thought we thought and wanted to be legal when we wanted to donate to the fire relief thing yes. and yes. found out we can't do that. So, but um, if you could send uh, Jasper an email with um, all this information and the dates and times and and your ask, Absolutely. then we can bring that up at our work session and get back to you before the twenty third. Okay. No problem. Sounds good. Thank all right. you. Thanks for your time. And thank you. Thank you for what you do. All right. Um, that concludes our persons to be heard, and so we'll move on to consent agenda items. Um, are there any you wish to remove? There's one. Do you want one removed? Yes, I'd actually like to table number. Um, on the consent agenda items? A through K. A through K? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Wait. I think I'm looking at. No, I'm sorry. I'm looking at uh, a business item to discuss. Okay, then that'll no. be different. Mm -hmm. So the only thing I'm going to pull real quick is number E, and then we'll discuss it and then um, vote on it. But so 
Uh, the consent agenda items will then consist of A, approve our conditional offer of employment for Jonathan Guyon for a public works maintenance worker. B is approve a conditional offer of employment for Jake Rodin, uh, Jack, sorry. <laughs> Jack Rodin, uh, community service officer, and then approve a C is approve an application for a temporary one day intoxicating liquor license for the event of the Tonka Brew Fest, and B D is approve a ready watt electric outdoor warning siren service agreement. F is approve claims. G is approving lakeshore and streetside setback variances at 3790 Enchanted Lane. H is a resolution denying side yard setback variances at 3790 Enchanted Lane. I is a resolution approving a lakeshore and streetside setback variances at 3800 Enchanted Lane. And J is a resolution denying side yard setback variances at 3800 Enchanted Lane. And K is accepting a sidewalk easement at 4358 Woodland Cove Parkway. Is there a motion to approve consent agenda items A through K except E? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Refkin. Is there a second? Mm -hmm. Is there any other questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes for oh. Um, the reason I I pulled item E, it's not that I don't want to accept it. Um, we can do that tonight, but I felt that there was so much information in here, and there may be some questions that council would like to ask A2S, and they're going to be coming back. Do you know when? I don't know exactly when. I think October, November. <clears throat> Um, with a task order for the, I think October is what we're shooting for. So yeah. what I'd like to do is when they come back for that, also bring this this <clears throat> report back so that council can add, they can do a, a, a synopsis. It was a lot of information and a lot that we don't need to get into all of the um, nitty gritty, but still some of it, if they could do a um, preli you know high level uh, presentation on that and so we can have our questions answered. So we can accept it now, that's fine. I don't see that there would be any reason not to, but I just wanted to point out that I would like them to bring that back too when they come. So, all right, with that then, I'll make a motion to accept the preliminary well siting and design report. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any further questions, discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes. So next we'll move on to business items. Our first business item is approve an ordinance. It's number 485. It's the Mediacom franchise extension through January 1st, 2031, and modifying certain franchise terms. Is that going to be you? Y yes, okay. uh, Madam Mayor, members of council, I can uh, give a brief synopsis of this. Uh, essentially, we have a Mediacom franchise agreement for video services in Minnetrista. Uh, we have a current one. It expires at the end of October. Uh, what we're doing is essentially... Uh, extending that for seven years, we're modifying some terms, uh, removing some figures that had build out numbers and, and figures in there uh, because we no longer need those uh, because Midco came in and built out in those areas. Um, one of the questions that came up at the work session when we discussed this at the last, uh, last meeting well, I was about the peg fee and if they were in line with other communities. Uh, we looked into that and we are in line with other communities, it appears. So, um, what we're looking for today, this is an ordinance. This would extend the franchise agreement through January 1 of 2031. Uh, and it would also include the modifications of those terms uh, that we discussed that are in the agreement. Mm -hmm. So I will entertain any questions. We also have uh, Sarah Sansala here uh, to also help out with any legal questions. Thank you. Council questions, comments? Okay. Um, so we're looking for a motion to let me get back to this. Um, to approve the uh, franchise agreement with media, it, well, extend. Technically extend. So we're looking for two motions, one to extend the franchise uh, agreement, and then one to approve the resolution authorizing the publication of the ordinance uh, by title and summary. Yeah. So uh, right. two, two so, for this. Um, so first, um, a motion to extend the uh, franchise agreement through January 1st, 2031. So Thank you, Ms. McGregor. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Miss um, Claudia. I always want to say Miss Claudia, Miss Lacey. Um, any further questions or discussion? 
Hearing none, all those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes 4-0. And next, um, I need a motion to authorize publication of ordinance number 485 by title and summary. So moved. Thank you, Ms. Refkin. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. McGregor. All those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes 4-0. And next, we'll move on to um, business item number B, and that's approved ordinance number 486. And that's amending sections 1505.19 and 1505.21 of the city code regarding the use of substances in public places. So I'll start with Mr. Kruger. Yes, uh, Madam Mayor, members of council, we discussed this at the at the work session at the last meeting and, and requested some information from council as far as how we'd like to proceed with this ordinance. Um, essentially, um, liquor, beer, edible cannabis products, and smoking and vaping in parks are what was determined to be included in the ordinance. Um, those things will not be allowed uh, and then enforced by our, our police department uh, moving forward uh, if this is approved. Um, that's essentially the, the basis of what this ordinance is. So we can entertain any any questions. I think that smoking, smoking cigarettes or vaping cigarettes was deleted. Yeah, he just forgot to say cannabis. Sorry. Yes. It's cannabis. Cannabis yes. products. So it's, and we discussed this kind of at length um, and decided that bec the, as long as it's not altering your state of mind or, um, yeah, altering your, your state of mind, that smoking cigarettes, even though we don't like smoking cigarettes, um, it's, it would be allowed. So smoking cigarettes would be allowed but not smoking cannabis or any other kind of intoxicating type of substance. substance. Thank you. So Madam Mayor, I have some discuss uh, discussion on this in council members. Um, yes, I, I understand what you're saying here, but uh, although cigarettes um, are not mind altering, there are 4,000 chemicals in them with 50 of them being carcinogenic. Um, they, I don't know how you're going to determine whether someone is smoking pot or smoking a cigarette other than smelling it. And if you've been to some of these cities that have um, allowed pot smoking in public places, um, it really is kind of taking over the country and you, it, it affects your experience walking in parks when you're smelling a lot of cannabis and a lot of pot. Yeah, and that won't be allowed. Well, how are you going to stop some, I mean, if you see four people at a picnic table and they're all smoking, how are you going to determine whether it's smoking pot or cigarettes? And what I thought was really interesting is um, the number one, um, other than cigarette butts being unsightly, the number one place they litter are city parks and beaches, not uh, that the poisoning comes from city parks and beaches, not from someone's ashtray in their home. And animals eat them indiscriminately, so it's very dangerous to animals. So we're talking about our parks, where children congregate. Um, I just really think there's, you don't need to smoke at all in a city park. And it's not just because it's a personal view. I just, you know, the, the pollution, the danger to animals, it's... Um, no, it isn't uh, mind altering. It's just cancerous. <laughs> you know, what's worse? So, um, you know, we have this big initiative in this country with um, the Clean Air Act to not have clean air in your city park where there's playgrounds and children. I know that they cannot be smoking your children, but, um, you know, children emulate what they see. And so I just don't know that um, a person smoking could go in their car which isn't really that far. Well, from. according to this, they, they couldn't. Yeah. No, not cannabis, but cigarettes. No, they can't. Right. If we cigarettes, add, they can smoke in their car. Not no. according to this. No. And so if they were parked in one of the parking lots of the public parks, they wouldn't be able to sit in their car and be smoking either. And if they're parked on a city street, they couldn't smoke in their car either. And if they're walking on a city street or on a city sidewalk, they couldn't be smoking either. So you can't just say city parks? I think you can. You, you'd have to... Well, the, the ordinance would then have to read city parks and beaches. I'll let Sarah weigh in. Yeah. Uh, Madam Mayor, members of the council, that, that is completely up to the council 
if you want to just limit it to parks or if you want it to be parks and trails or parks and sidewalks, whatever you want to mm -hmm. want to limit it to. Well, so we would want to eliminate or want to make it illegal to have any kind of alcohol or cannabis or intoxicating substance, no matter where. I mean, right? Mm -hmm. So you'd almost have to break out if you wanted to do cigarettes are allowed on city streets, uh, sidewalks, on city property, other than city parks, right? Right. Correct. So can you do that? Uh, Madam Mayor, members of the council, um, I, I think you could, although, I mean, it kind of, then why are you allowing smoking on city streets, but not... <laughs> Cannabis, yeah. Are picking what areas you can mm -hmm. use cigarettes, but mm -hmm. not, I believe, is what they're asking. Right. <laughs> I just don't think you can selectively say you can smoke one thing and not another. Smoking is an act. You know, whether it's cigarettes or pot, why are you allowing any smoking in a park where there's children? Okay, but I think what, what, what we're saying is if you don't allow it in parks, you'd have to not allow it in any other public location. That's not correct, I don't believe. I think you can so. say just in parks, just in our parks. Madam Mayor, members of the council, you, you can certainly do that. And I think we talked about that at the work session about where do you want to limit the smoking? Just the parks or do you want to include street sidewalks in front of city buildings, mm -mm. city property? So right now it's very inclusive. <coughs> how it's written. Paul, do you care to weigh in? I mean, is there any... Madam Mayor and Council, I, I think uh, we did briefly have this discussion. Uh, certainly there's, you know, some cities do just prohibit it across the board uh, simply because it's probably easier, uh, to your point, that you can see someone smoking. Uh, with that, uh, certainly officers would be able to tell the difference once they got close, whether it's a cigarette or, I mean, marijuana has a very distinctive odor. So we would be able to flush that out and figure out if they're using um, cannabis or if it's just a regular cigarette. So really, I think the bigger question is, does the city want to prohibit regular smoking? I think to date, it's probably worth saying that uh, I, I'm not aware of a single complaint of anybody smoking in a city park or on a trail or anything uh, related to smoking in general cigarettes um, to date. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that changes your mind, whether you want to address that or not. Um, that hasn't been an issue to date. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand where you're going with the cannabis because that presents right. a whole different set of mm -hmm. issues. So I guess that's really the decision the council has to make if you want to prohibit all of it or just part of it. Right. Okay. Thank well, and you. it just was passed on August 1st. So I think, um, again, what I mentioned earlier, if you've traveled to some of these other cities and you see how invasive it's become, um, you know, it is also uh, John Q. Citizen isn't going to go up to four kids at a picnic table and and question what they're smoking, you know? I mean, I know you can smell the difference, but it's m more the public that are gonna be there experiencing this. You're not sitting in parks and that's not what you're... Right, but the public would not enforce that. The public doesn't have the authority to go up to anybody and say, hey, you're smoking cannabis. You can't do that. They can say that, but it, that holds no authority whatsoever. Uh, right. Nobody's so, nobody's bound to, to so listen. So if there's to no other. smoking at all, it wouldn't be an issue. The the the, peop, the families wouldn't have to go up to a table and say, "Hey, you they should. they couldn't well, go up to right. the table." Well, they can, but nobody has to listen to them. Yeah. Right. No one has to listen. To them. Is what I'm saying. It, really, that's an enforcement piece. Um, we don't expect. I don't think the council's intent, and correct me if I'm wrong, is to pass this so that the public can enforce it. I think it's, mm -hmm. we either want right. to create a, an ordinance that is enforceable or we don't. Uh, and the public wouldn't be the ones doing that. Uh, with that said, I think this is going to be, as we approach many of the uh, ordinance violations, it's going to be a complaint basis. We're not going to, mm -hmm. we, the police department certainly doesn't have the staff or the time right. to just regular, routinely uh, patrol parks looking for people smoking cannabis. But certainly if we get a complaint, then we'll, we'll respond and we'll, uh, we'll deal with that appropriately. Um, well, all you have to do is drive by the Mound Beach and see people congregating at the picnic tables. That's sure. not but that's stuff. that's not an interest. I understand that, but that's a beach or a park, and that's where young people, you know, where people congregate. Right. And so, if it was just no smoking, it would be a lot easier. Um, 
when we had this discussion uh, last meeting, mm -hmm. we came to the conclusion that we wanted to keep the smoking in um, and see what happened, see if we got complaints and see, see where it went, because we can always bring it back and change it. But for now, if people do want to smoke in their car or whatever, or be at an event, we don't want them to miss the event because of smell. So that's what that is. An event? Well, if there's a function at a park. Mm. So also no issues on the number one place where the poisoning happens to animals is in parks and beaches. We, we can't stop people from littering. I mean... But if they're not allowed to smoke there, there wouldn't be cigarette butts in the sand or in the park. Well, I well, think it comes I think, down to enforcement. Yeah, Even if yeah. it's not allowed, if there's some people who are doing it. There's some people who are littering. You have people who litter now when you have the smoking cans right next to the door, and people still throw them on the ground. Um, I mean that. Yeah, if there's people are littering, that's that's another issue too. But um, they're not. Even if they're a smoker, they're not allowed to litter. I mean, so. But I, I think to, to Anne's point, we, we decided, yeah, you know, let's, we'll try it out without leaving out the this, this cigarette smoking for now. And if we get complaints, as you are saying, you know, people complain and say, well, there's, there's a bunch of people in the park and they're smoking cigarettes and, and they're, whatever they're doing that might impair other people from enjoying the park, mm -hmm. then we can take another look at. We definitely can. But I think... We have, we're walking, you know, we need to make sure that we also allow certain freedoms for people as well. And as awful as smoking is, I agree with you. There's it's, nothing good about it. There's nothing good about it. And so, and, and I think we all agree on that. Mm -hmm. I think it's a matter of then how do you, you know, somebody walking down the street, they're not allowed to smoke on, on the sidewalk. Somebody that is, let's say they're a city employee, they would actually have to drive I'm no, not we, sure we where. Just, we determined that that's not the case. You could just segregate the parks. Okay, but what we're saying is we're, I, I think we should, my opinion, just my opinion, we should leave the ordinance as it is for now. And I agree with Anne. We should take a look at it maybe even once a year or every six months, to some, not every six months, because in this wintertime people don't use the parks, mm -hmm. but maybe every year say, hey, has it been a problem? Do we need to make a change? All, all of your arguments are excellent. They're, they're absolutely excellent. And um, maybe you'll be the person who makes all the complaints. <laughs> <laughs> Come back to it. Oh. So, all right. Um, Thanks for listening. Well, thank you for sharing your opinion. Seriously. Um, yes. Um, so now, um, is there then... Um, in agreement, I've, I'm going to say there sounds like there's at least three that would be approving ordinance number 486, amending sections 1505.19 and 1505.21 of the city code regarding the use of substance, substances in public places. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Refkin made that motion and Ms. McGregor seconded that. Any further questions or comments? Just saying that um, it also affects the rainwater. It, they, <laughs> so, <laughs> Very good. Uh, all right. Um, all right. If there's none other ones, um, all those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. Um, so it's uh, three ayes and one nay, Miss Lacey. Um, then next would be, um, is there a motion to authorize authorizing publication of ordinance number 486 by title and summary? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Refkin. Is there a second? second. Thank you, Ms. Uh, McGregor. Mayor, yes. Before you take the vote on this one, I just want to remind you it takes four votes. And um, I know you had a three to one vote it, here. This is just to publish it. So we don't have to pay publication costs. So it, I, would, yes, I would advise I would. you do the four votes. Yeah. That's obviously your discretion. Yeah, so you're not approving the ordinance with just this. Approving how we publish the right. ordinance so just approved. If if Otherwise we, we have to print the whole we thing. have to print the whole thing, which is going to cost us about what nine hundred dollars. Okay. Versus I'm very fiscally responsible, so <laughs> okay. I will change my vote. No, no, no you no, don't. No. You okay, I will. Oh God, no, help me, Miss Lacey. You don't have to change your vote on the okay. ordinance. Thank okay. You. 
um, she's just pointing out that we have to public. Understood. We have to, Understood. Okay. All right. So is there a motion then to authorize publication of Ordinance 486 by title and summary? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Refkin. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. McGregor. Any questions? No. Okay. <laughs> All those in favor, signify with aye. 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 All those opposed? Zero. Motion passes. Yeah. It's it's a little confusing. I, Thank you. I, I, Thank it, you, it Sarah. Is. Thank yes. you. Um, so that concludes our business items. We'll move on to staff reports. We'll start with city engineer project. And I have a question. Yes. I, I'm going to ask you the question right off. So um, I drove down um, Morningside, whatever, Morning. over there. Mm -hmm. And they, there was a section that they were doing, and they were putting black fabric down mm -hmm. and then That's it correct. looked and it was like this deep and now they're going to put stuff over it I didn't know that they put fabric down that's correct. Uh, Madam Mayor, members of council, that's that's one of the, the components of the street section that was specified. Um, and it's a, it's we look at it from a, a, it's a it's a special geotextile fabric for the, the street section. So good observation on that. I mean, is what it for it do? what does it do? That's <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, well, that's a good question. It keeps the, so we've got the, the, the clay underneath the sand, so it keeps the, the clay from migrating up into the sand. And I believe it, it, it um, I'll have to check on that with the, the uh, pavement engineers, but I believe there's a component of the strength of the street section. It probably strengthens it, mm -hmm. and maybe Gary knows. It's, it, a, so. it's a barrier to keep the clay from, um, merging back in with the with the subsoil that we're putting down in there okay it also acts as a um, barrier to help the water shed to the sides you know okay. the road when you when you have the crown in the road to get the water off of there so there's did probably, they do that there's probably 50 different types of materials that are used for different soils so mm -hmm. but they didn't do that the whole project yes oh yep. they did mm -hmm. okay yep because the whole the thing soils. gets done that way okay mm -hmm. okay all right all our new constructions that way, all the new developments. Mm -hmm. Okay. I hadn't seen it before, so I just was curious. That's but a good question. That's it. Put all me right. to the test. I like it. <laughs> um, so with that project, the, uh, the street contractor is finishing up phase B uh, of the streets. So what folks are seeing out there right now isn't the final product that pavement goes on top of. They, they correct it to a certain tolerance or a certain elevation. And then before they get ready for curb, they'll come in and they'll clean it up. So you're still seeing some areas that are a little <laughs> soft and, mm -hmm. and moving a little bit. You can see tire tracks. We have some very heavy equipment going over top of it, and that's the test for it. Um, so anything that's still moving or, or pumping, they call it, um, will be removed, corrected before they go and start paving through there. Um, the next step is after they're completed with that later this week, the curb crew will be out. And then we'll start seeing... Um, seeing them come through, uh, we've provided, we will provide the, the um, curb crew with the bus stop schedule so that they can go and get that staged appropriately so we can get that school bus in and out of there. Actually, there's three that come in and out of there during the day. Um, so we continue to work closely with the transportation department on that. Um, and then at, we figure there will probably be about a week's worth of curb work and then we'll get the paving crew in there too to get the, the blacktop in. So okay. we'll start seeing some real final product out there in the next week here. And then Gary, another question. It looked like, um, I don't know if you did it recently or if it was just rains, but it looked like the, um, some of that, um, not water, what do we put down? Calcium chloride. Yeah, that it's that you've done that recently? Yeah, it was done uh, after we had our meeting with the homeowner there, we yeah. did that whole area looked, through there. I know the dust was way down when, yep. I, when I drove it today. So that was really good, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, we had that nice soaking rain too last yeah. week, which really helps out with, with getting the, with the dust. Better, so. I know. We're getting there. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? All right. And then. Um, yes. Um, Madam Mayor, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, the holiday tree lighting event that we have coming up on November 30th. Um, uh, you'll see this in the bill back and then also um, in our newsletter here this fall. Um, but that is on November 30th from five to seven. We've been working on uh, kind of planning on that. And we have, we have quite a few sponsors. I just kind of want to briefly mention who we have for sponsors that have committed. Um, AE2S, Curbside Waste, um, Kennedy and Graven, 
uh, WSB and Excel Energy are all committed. Uh, we're working on a couple other ones. Uh, Dur Dur Duran. Duran. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they, they, they also have mm -hmm. donated. So we're working on a few of them. Um, you'll start seeing a little bit of activity over here on the west side of City Hall with a tree being brought in and, and just some planning activities going on. So uh, there'll be more information that you see on the website and social media about the event. So hopefully uh, if you're interested in on November 30th, you can come out and, and and uh, participate in our uh, first ever holiday tree lighting event. I think there'll be some fire pits. There'll be uh, some s'mores you can be able to do. Uh, we'll have some coffee and I think hot cocoa and some mini donuts. There'll be a mini donut food truck here. So, And the Lions are doing a wine and beer tent. That's right. That's probably the yeah. best part, uh, the, the wine and beer tent. So, um, yeah, it'll be good. We'll, right. we'll give us uh, our first shot at this. And um, I'm sure we'll learn a lot and, and be able to build on that for years to come. All right. That's all I have. Thank you. And David, you need somebody for planning, right? Yep. I'm going to be gone. You're going to be gone. Are you available? What, what, what's um, the next 20, Monday. Next Monday? Monday? I'll be there. Oh, okay. I'll go. Okay. All right. And then we have council. Any, any other staff? Okay. Um, council reports. Claudia, anything? No, nothing. Okay. Gillespie Center, I have a board meeting this Thursday. Okay. And we're, we're going to go over finances uh, okay. from year to date. And um, I, I, I think they're coming along. And I think this new president is really putting some things in place. Good. Good. Um, I have nothing, but I will not be at the next meeting. Yep. Um, so I I was at the uh, Northwest um, Hennepin League. Uh, it was We didn't have a speaker. It was just city updates. Uh, some of the cities have done their preliminary um, levies and... They range between five and 12% kind of in there. So we're a little bit high, but we're working on it. Um, but in the past, they've been higher and we've been lower. So I think we're just kind of playing catch up now. But our tax rate is a lot lower than most of theirs. Um, and then I mentioned this during our work session, but um, I was surprised to hear. So Corcoran is also a growing community similar to ours, and they receive $10 million dollars um, in the water for a uh, water infrastructure from the bonding bill this year. So disappointed that we didn't, but anyhow. And then um, I also attended the uh, mayor's breakfast with Congressman uh, Phillips. And uh, again, just kind of general information and, and what's happening in Washington. So not, not, not so much local issues there, but um, just good to also network and talk to other mayors in the area. And that's about it it okay. so with that looking forward to the november 30th right you guys oh and if you would like to volunteer for anything let jasper know because we need we need volunteers yeah we probably need i don't know anywhere from 10 to 15 at least um, we'll have some staff there too but yeah. it'd be great to get get that many to help out with fire pit uh um kind of watching the, over the fire pits and traffic control and things like that right. so if you're interested let me know. Okay. Are we wearing ugly Christmas sweaters? I, <laughs> you I think, can if you I think want. You can, yeah. I have one for the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, Miss Lacey. We're gonna, have a, we're gonna have a mayor sweater lighting as well. <gasps> yeah, we'll, we'll we'll talk about that one. <laughs> All right. With that, is there a motion to adjourn? Thank you, Ms. Repkin. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Lacey. All those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes for all. We will meet again on the second. We'll see you after that.